Hello, hello ladies and gents and welcome to this tutorial on normalizing in Logic Pro X. What I'm going to do is show you how to do it first of all. I'm then going to go on to explain why you should do it and different settings you could choose for different instances. So if you want to get stuck straight in, just go straight to the first bit and how to do it. So what I have here is a project that my students created a year or two ago. And I'm looking here at a kick drum part that I have already soloed. And as you can see, uh, there's the waveform there and the green space uh, in above and below is what's called the headroom. So it's the amount of space between the loudest point of this track, which is actually right at the end here, the last kick, and the edge of this green strip, which is what's considered to be zero decibels, the point of distortion. And above that, and then the waveform will be sliced off and be distorted. So I'm going to normalize this to bring it down to what we call a normal level. I'll explain what that is in a bit. So this is what you do. You double click and it opens up in the editor below. Uh, you want to make sure that out of these three options here, track, file and smart tempo, that you click on file. You'll also see that the waveform is opened up down here below. You've then got some options down the left hand side here, audio file, edit, functions and view. Normalize in Logic comes under functions. And it's very quirky. It's really unique in Logic, the way this is set up. In fact, quite illogical, but there we go. But once you know where it is, just fine. There, you can see normalize there. Don't go straight for it because you actually need to set it up first in function settings. So click on function settings. And this is your normalizing settings. So we're going to do this to peak at a specific decibel rating. So the loudest point of the waveform in this instance is going to be minus 10 decibels. So 10 decibels below the point of distortion. So we go to the right hand box for this. Obviously, if you're doing it by percentage, you need to kind of work out what percentage you need to move it by. But if you do it to a set of decibels, then every single part that you normalize will peak at minus 10 decibels. So it's a much easier way to normalize. So just going to type in minus 10, click outside the box, and there we go, it says minus 10 decibels. So I've set the function settings. Once you set it, Logic will remember those until you change them. So why minus 10? I'll come to that later in the video. Just go for minus 10 in a complex multi-track project. So to actually normalize, uh, I now need to go back to functions again and click on normalize and you should watch. There we go. Could you see that snap straight away? So now the loudest point of this part here is peaking not close to zero, but at minus 10 decibels and everything else has moved in relation to it. So the actual quality order is that the same. It's just got a lower gain and the peaks and the quietest bits are still the same distance apart so there's been no change in the dynamic range it's just overall quieter of course you've got a very quiet take then normalizing might increase the level in this case because it's quite a hot take you know the level is quite high it's reduced the level and you'll see if i just close down this window and unsolder it i've already applied the minus 10 decibels throughout this project and as you can see that all the waveforms are now uniform. This is a phenomena of digital technology. When we record on tape, you couldn't do this, but now we can. The reason why we're normalizing is to give ourselves a fighting chance when we're mixing. Everything is at the same level. But if you've got one part that's really loud, one part's really quiet, when you go to the mixer, just to balance them, you're gonna have one fader really high and one fader really low. I've already started mixing this a while ago. I'm kind of deconstructing it for this video. But uh, essentially, it allows me to start off with everything at the same level and just reduce the level of things that I want more in the background and leave at zero or just slightly below the things I want right in the foreground. It makes mixing so much easier if you normalize. Why minus 10? Why not minus 1 or 2 or 3? Well, depending on what you are actually working on, it will depend on what you normalize to. You need to remember that when you start layering in multi-track format, one track over another, over another, over another, when they play together, you will find that your master level will creep up, up and up. You'll add audio, you increase volume. So if everything is almost a zero to start with, and you put another track on, another track on, another track on, you can end up with your master going into the red. That's fine. You can bring the faders down. But in multi-track projects, it's pretty much conventional to set your normalizing to reduce or increase, whatever it is, your peak levels 
So minus 10 decibels give you 10 decibels of headroom on each track, which means you can layer lots and lots of tracks on top of each other without actually pushing the master over. So let's um, settle these back to uh, zero pretty much. It won't sound very good because um, everything's going to be jostling for space. There's also a bit of panning in this mix as well. I won't undo all that because I'll be here to kingdom come. And there's some processing in here from a previous mix, but... So as you can see, my master there, despite the fact I've got nine tracks, it wasn't peaking, it wasn't going to the red. And that's with everything pretty much set to zero decibels. That's because I set that each track to peak at minus 10. It gives me also lots of headroom to apply processing. So for example, on this kick drum, I actually applied some EQ, uh, a noise gain, a compressor. I'm tempted to add some drive to it as well, actually, but... Uh... For multi-track projects and music, 10 decibels below zero is pretty much your industry standard. There are other settings. If you're doing, say, an acoustic piece of music with a couple of guitars and vocals, you can afford to maybe give it a bit more level, uh, maybe go for minus six. The only other convention which is quite popular in industry is if you're making a sample library. Now, a lot of sample libraries arrive with the samples peaking at zero, which means you've only got to go and normalize them all. So I always normalize all my samples to three decibels below zero, minus three. So that when I bring them in, I've got a little bit of headroom straight away to play with. You know, if you're working in media and you're bringing in sound effects and things like that, you don't want everything peaking at zero. So three decibels of headroom is good for sample library. Six decibels of headroom, minus six dB. Great for simple recordings or something, I don't know, two or three tracks. And generally, 10 decibels below distortion, 10 decibels below zero is your standard for multi-track mixing. There, I think I've got through it all. Thanks for watching.